Hey everyone, welcome back to AFTV. Welcome to another Forever Arsenal. Hey everyone, welcome back to AFTV. Welcome to another Forever Arsenal podcast. I can't believe it's only been about six days since the last one because so much has happened uh, in the world of transfers. Some stuff I need to apologise to Jordan about, uh, but other stuff has got very exciting as well. Um, you know what I'm talking about, Jordan. We'll get into it. Um, first and foremost, let's have a massive welcome to Dan Potts, who's stepping in for Turkish today. Big thank you. Welcome, Dan. Hello, boys. How you doing? Always a pleasure, man. Love this podcast. And uh, when I get the shout, I'm more than happy to jump on. So uh, big up Turkish. Hope he enjoys himself. And uh, yeah. more than happy to step in and talk to you free. He's He's gone to New York, guys. He's totally left us. Um, but we do wish him all the fun. Oh, he's, there um, all right he's, starting, he's starting to annoy me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Right, right, has it got moment. anything to do with the three points he collected? Yeah, in this unbelievable. Right, you know I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck we all me. predicted that all the results, there was just one result that was right, and he gets it. And, of course, you know, being Turkish, you know, he's not... Sh- I'll tell you what, he's he's not shy in coming forward when it's things like that. He is when he gets up in the morning, but <laughs> no one couldn't wait to give it, could he, like, you know what I mean? And I do believe he's already put the table up and everything, like, you know, so... <laughs> he has. Oh, Although, really- as you know... Well, as you know, we've had some technical difficulties in the background. Nothing to do with me this time. Nothing to do with me. Um, but it's quite funny because it means I can't actually from here access his league table. So no one has to see that he's three points ahead. So. Fantastic. Well done. Thank <laughs> God for technology not working. because he, I, he, he, I actually caught him in the office doing it about an hour after he found out. Like, you know what I mean? No and, way. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, he's, he, like, he was like a kid with a new toy, like, do you know what I mean? Doing it. Shameless. Oh, shameless. Like, shameless. 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 Yeah. You know, and also, the fella that that messaged him, right, I don't know his name now because we ain't got, because Turkish, ain't he? messaged him to say, be careful with, with the league because he, he knows someone that knows the fixtures and he's probably cheated. Like, you know what I mean? If that is going uh, to be doing that, you know what I mean? Like, what, what do they think I am like? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Scandalous. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he got, so, which one did he get? He got Brentford Tottenham, right? Brentford Tottenham he got in the right order as well. So not only did he pick up just a point, he picked up the maximum three points you can. He's good at this game, mate. Good at this game. I tell you. Yeah, so what were there, 40, 40 fixture predictions and no one else got a single other fixture no. and he's picked up three points. It's Sorot. It's Sorot. I, I blame Sorot. It's Sorot. I suppose he's gone away with him, Sorot. I ain't seen him. Where's Sorot? Oh, he's away. Yeah. Some yeah. dodgy stuff going on there. Yeah, some dodgy Shiroi. stuff going on between them two. Yeah, what is it with them two, man? It's called the oh, Sherroy no, Show now instead of the Supporters Club. All things like that start making me wonder what's going on like. You know I mean? The Sherroy Show. <laughs> the, Shiro- the Sherroy Supporters Club. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know I mean? Support I have, Sherroy. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Support Sherroy. Support <laughs> <laughs> no, big up Sheroy, man. I love Sheroy. <laughs> well, I did like him once upon a time. I'm not going to lie. But I... Yeah. You know, it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you, you know, it's sort of like if you go to a club or go out of them at the night out, like, you, you know, you, you look around one time, like, you know, where are they? Oh, they've, they've gone. They've, they've gone and got a cab home together or something. Like, let's just leave you there. They're sort of like one of the, you know, I don't trust them no more, like, you know what I mean? There you go. Fair enough. Ran over, right, as you Ran all know, over, Lee. <laughs> Lee's not happy because we did the predictions in the fixtures last week. Uh, none of us got a single one right, except for Turkish, who's nailed the three points by guessing Brentford at home against Tottenham away. Uh, so, oh, well, uh, we'll pretend that didn't happen. We'll get back to the predictions again uh, at the start of the new season. Uh, we've got to talk transfers. Um, I sort of thought when we left the last podcast that we would just be talking about Declan Rice uh, updates on the next one. Since then, um, Kai Havertz has come out of nowhere. Dan and I have had really good chats about it on Talking Transfers on AFTV. Uh, but we'll explore that a little bit more because it looks like Arsenal wanted to go as high as £60 million to bring him in. Um, but there's been breaking news through the night that we'll talk about first, which is David Ornstein saying that Arsenal have made a £30 million pound bid for Jury and Timber and that all personal terms are already agreed with the player. So... Look, I, I owed uh, Jordan an apology because I said that the Declan Rice stuff, I thought Arsenal were conducting their business well around that. Um, and I said on the breaking news that a bid was rejected that Jordan was right. The Arsenal were dragging their heels a bit and it and it's 
proven that way. Um, but at least things aren't slowing down elsewhere. So, Jordan, I kind of want to get your take on kind of everything <clears> first, <throat> but 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 moving on to timber as well. Kind of where mm. where do you stand five six days on? Can I just start by making a general point about the transfer window and this period of the year, guys? That I hate this. I really, really hate this talking about Actually, speculation yeah. and this person. And it just doesn't help that, I mean, we'll, we'll get to Timber in a second and, and obviously well sourced by David Ornstein. But you have all, the, everyone's an expert during the summer. Everyone's got sources. Everyone's just regurgitating the same crap that, that everyone else is just spouting. And just my timeline is just filled with, with, with so-called transfer gurus that have opinions about absolutely nothing. It just makes me really annoyed. And, you know, Arsenal indirectly and unintentionally, I think, feed it. Because the Timber deal, if that happens, that is a brilliant signing. Let's get that out of the gate straight away. That is a brilliant get. Um, and I wanted a defender to come in. But how many more people are going to be linked with or talking to or negotiating with at the same time? Can we get one deal done first? Mm. Can we get can we get one deal done? Is is that okay? That's interesting. <laughs> can, can we, can I, we I just thought you'd have been like I'm I'm relieved that a Declan Rice deal that has proven more complicated than we thought isn't slowing down other business, if you know what I mean. Well, I mean, the, the likes of your, your Romanos and your and your David Ornsteins, who are well sourced, these things, these things come out and they're gonna they're gonna break these news, but when they hear when they hear these things, but I just don't understand why the club are semi-briefing certain journalists and not just locking down the deals that they we keep getting told are far down the line. And, and it just makes me nervous about, A, will we get these players? And B, are we doing all the work to then get gazumped by City, Chelsea, United, Liverpool? Do you know what I mean? And I just don't understand... This is my big grab about Arsenal and transfers. Big clubs get these deals done relatively quickly. I don't buy this idea these deals have to drag. Some deals do drag, but City, Chelsea and Liverpool generally get their business done quite quickly. Why do we take weeks and weeks and weeks over a bid? Not even like a, a, a contract. It's like weeks for a bid. Then we're talking to the player. Then it's like, oh, no, no, no. I don't understand that. It just, it just annoys me. So I, I hear your point about us kind of not letting one deal slow down another deal. But unless we're going to announce three deals at the same time, I, just, I would just like one deal done, at, you know, what, just get one deal done <laughs> sort of thing. So, so so this whole period really annoys me. Really just, it just really, I just don't, I don't get any pleasure from all this transfer chat. Some people love it. Some people love it. I, I don't. Yeah, fair enough. Lee, the, the no, Timber I, stuff I, side. To I'm mind. with Jordan on this. I'm with Jordan on this. If I could, switch off from it or I would you know what I mean like this is where I, I, I love my, love what I do and everything like that but this is the one time I don't because like some of my mates and all that they just go right I'm turning off not going on no more chats I'm just because it's just it winds people up and it, and, and it does wind me up what I'm seeing all the time like you know what I mean what I'm reading uh, uh, and I've always been quite relaxed about what's going to happen in this, in this transfer window I actually thought like I would do well in it and all that and, and trust the process and everything like that. I'm panicking now, and it's all because of what's going on. We're letting party go, like according to everybody now. We're letting uh, Shaka go. We 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 don't want to go in, in with Casido. All of a sudden, um, we're being linked with a Southampton player. And then we're being linked with uh, uh, another defender. And then another one comes up to the fray and everything like that. But what what Arsenal need? I don't care what anybody says. They need five players. And that's without players going. Now, I'm also in in this theory of, I've said this before, I'm not worried about if Thomas Party goes, I'm not worried if Shaka goes, because I've said all along that we're going to lose a few casualties. Then I'm hearing like, uh, Tierney might be staying. Um, well, that's great. I'm, I'm not saying it isn't. But like, people are going, oh, that's great, Tierney's staying. Well, Tierney hardly plays lot for us. But Party plays all the time. Oh, well, if I want to get rid of Party, that's all right, like, you know. It just seems it's a bit of a mismatch. And the one thing that worries me about Arsenal, and the one question that I would like someone to answer me at Arsenal, and Robbie, Robbie answered it yesterday and it frightened me when he said it. Why in January are you putting a £17 million bid in for a casino and then in the summer you're not going for him? And Robbie turned around and said, because Arsenal changed their mind. 
you're prepared to pay £70 million for somebody three months ago, four months ago, and now you're changing your mind. That worries me that we haven't got a plan of all that because we're prepared to change our mind. I thought if you want a player, go and get him. I look at Liverpool a few years ago. We're in a little bit of the same position as we are. Can they go? Can they not? Van Dyke come up. They couldn't get him in, in the summer. They put a £70 million bid. As soon as the January transfer window, in they went again got him and, and look what happens. It, it, it seemed to me that they, that, that, and I looked at that and I thought, wow, a plan. It seems like it's a, sh you know, a machine gun, shut a gun thing like, oh, we'll try this, try that. It, it looks a bit panicky to me. Like I'm getting worried. I'm getting worried. I know I shouldn't, but I am getting worried by it. I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, Dan, I'll come to you before I sort of explain why I'm surprised. You, you feeling the same? I think I'm a little bit like you, James, um, at the moment. I understand the concerns. Um, doesn't really look like anything's happened yet so I don't really get to until something happens I'm not going to start losing my head about it because hmm. one thing I was listening to um, a couple of days ago and I totally agreed with a few people that said it was where's this panic with Newcastle Manchester United Liverpool Chelsea I'd be panicking if I'm them they ain't got anybody in when it's Arsenal oh my god we haven't signed anyone which so I think sometimes we need to look at it. It has only been a few days. This is the earliest I've ever seen us go in for five or six players, ever. I don't remember us ever being close to Havertz, Rice, now Timber, Lavia or Caicedo. Wow, like this is a little bit more refreshing in my eyes. But, of course, we've got to get the deals over the line. And I'm going to be looking at Edu and Arteta. I'm going to be looking at the Cronkies to ensure they're putting money up. But all of that's still up in the air at the moment. If we were a week to go, I'll be with these guys. Like, what the hell are we doing? But it's still early days. Now, on the other flip side to that, if we are going to start to let players go like Party and Chaka, then we ain't actually strengthening. I hope everyone knows that. Because if Chaka mm, and Party leave and Lavia and Rice come in, I would argue that's probably weaker in the middle. Because I love Rice. But is Lavia an upgrade on Party? No. Rice probably is an upgrade on Chaka, but the way that Chaka played so well last season, you would mm -hmm. suggest that it might take Rice some time to bed into a new side, some would say. Now, mm -hmm. that's your concerns I would have. Where does Kai Havertz fit into this side? Well, he doesn't get into our starting eleven, And that's another thing. We shouldn't have a starting eleven and a backup eleven anymore. We're not at those days. We're not trying to scrape into top four. So if Kai Havertz implements himself into the squad, I'm calm with that. If he believes he is the guy he wants, we're going to have to back it. So there's a lot of rumours and I'm with Jordan. It's like going to the dentist this transfer window. You just want it over with and it to go well, right? That's literally it. <laughs> but I'm not going to start losing my head five days in. But I am concerned about this lack of plan, like Lee says, because this Caicedo thing for me, if you're going in for 70 million in January and then all of a sudden you go, actually, we're going to spend that money on Kai Havertz, a player that I don't see fitting into the first 11, whereas Caicedo potentially could. That for me is a little bit strange. So there are some ups and downs, but I'm not going to totally lose my lose my shit right now. But I do have concerns from the guys. But at the same time, this is refreshing for me to actually see us trying to get these deals done early doors as opposed to waiting to the end of it. James, sorry, just before you come in, just very quickly, two things. I, I, I'm not panicking. I, I get why Lee's. I'm not panicking. I'm just a little bit concerned about how how much talk there is around individual players without any real progress so rice is the big example there's been talk around rice now for well you can go back to, Jan go to january but it's really been a month there's been like a lot of talk around rice and we haven't even agreed a fee yet that, I mean, now, that, that, you know what jordan let me just call on that quickly i i hmm. actually agree with that i actually agree with everything you've just said because for me this haven't we been speaking to this guy since january and we agreed fees with this guy in terms of his contracts and personal for terms. If you want to agree everything you read, they clearly want 100 million and we're like, I tell you what, how about 80? How, how about 85? How about 90? How about Just give him 100. What are we trying to say 10 million pound for? Just go and get the guy. I don't get this. If you want him, you've got to pay it. Otherwise, don't muck around. So that uh, that it does frustrate me. I'm with and, you, there, man. And regarding, sorry, and just regarding to your, to your point, Leon, to respond to Caicedo, I think Brighton have raised the price. Yeah. I think that's why they've not gone back in for him. I think Brighton have said, no, no, no. 70 million was then. Now, if Rice is going for 100, we want at least 100. So that's why I think Arsenal have bought slightly back. To, I think. I, I, think. I agree. They've said 120 million. And now what you're seeing is Chelsea are starting to think, oh, I don't know. And that tells you, if Chelsea are thinking they're not sure about paying <laughs> it, that tells you something. Um, I, I'm, I'm with Dan on being the more kind of cautiously optimistic 
you know, on the more optimistic side of this because <clears throat> you've got you've got a situation here where Arsenal I think are trying to pull off some really big deals. And I think I think we'll talk about all three individually in a sec, but essentially I thought what every media outlet was saying, Rice is the priority. They're looking at this player, but they've got to get Rice done first. And since then, they've put in fifty million pound bid for Habits and a thirty million pound bid for Timber. Like uh, that's encouraging to me because that tells me that there's plenty of money to play with there. That they're happy to sort of get on with other things. They don't feel it's going to eat into the Rice stuff and that they're dealing with the Rice stuff separately. Um, there was a comment here because obviously we do our comments of the week and we'll go through them at the end. But from um, Ranjan Chetty says uh, the. He, he's quoted me where I've said the club have done really well on this. And then he goes, this will go down as the quote of the transfer window. At the time of making it, the club has done F all. Uh, when the podcast happens next week, James, please amplify how the club have done well. Looking forward to that. So he's not happy with me. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to make is I think they've put things in place quite early that we're at a point where if any one of those three deals today or in the next week, progresses significantly to the point where they're done and you know we're sort of still three weeks out from pre-season I would say that's operating pretty quickly um and we put ourselves in a position with Rice where other clubs are coming in but they're basically being told no thanks he only wants the Arsenal move I think that's pretty good from the club yes nothing is done yet but even this Lavia stuff I'm really encouraged that reputable journalists are coming out and saying no they're looking at Lavia now because Caicedo's too much I'm like that's great because I was worried that they weren't going to look at Caicedo because it was Caicedo or Rice. Now we're hearing it's not either or. They do want both. They just can't realistically do both. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that the club, where I think it is a little erratic, is when I hear things like Havertz is an opportunistic signing. And I go, well, is that a good or a bad thing? Because it could be a good thing because it means Arteta rates him so much that he's basically just desperate to bring him through the door at the cost of messing up plans a little bit. Um, or it's actually, we don't have a plan at all and we're just going to throw 50 million at a player that wasn't a part of the plans originally. That's where I think it's a bit. The, the only thing know. that we, is an odd thing is that, and again, like Jordan said at the start, this is all talk. No, everyone thinks they're the ITK and they know what they're doing. But when you mm. listen to Warnstein and Romano, they're the two that I normally go to. I don't really look at the rest. If I'm honest with you, those two were saying that Arsenal were prepared to go in for Mount and ended up with Havertz. Now, that to me is not really, is that plan A? Like, we're looking at going for Mount because that's the guy that we want. And that actually more fits into a system in terms of, I know where he plays, he's a workhorse. He's not my favourite player, if I'm honest with you. I don't really like either of them. But then we come out and go, actually, we're not going for Mount. He wants Man United. I'll tell you what, we'll take Havertz then. It's all a bit, wow. I mean, if we've gone in there, as a plan A, I want Kai Havertz. He hasn't worked out for Chelsea, but I can get the best out of him. Maybe he has. I would fi find that a bit more, um, what's the word, um, encouraging. But it sounds a bit weird for me. And like Lee was saying earlier, party looks like he might be going to Tierney now staying. And, and the fan base are very, very trust. Mo most of them are very trusting, aren't they? It's like mm. party, oh, he can go. He's got to go anyway because he's 30. I mean, are you serious? He's, one of, he's been one of our best midfielders the whole of this last two seasons. So it is very odd. It is looking a little bit up in the air. And there's, you know, I've always questioned the plans at Arsenal. I think Edu and Arteta are under a lot of pressure to get their plan A priority targets. If we don't end up with Rice or one of the guys that we're going for, it is going to be looked bad again. You're going to go, oh, that's another one to add to Mudrik, Vlahovic, Caicedo now twice. Do you know what I mean? He's, they're going to have pressure, I'll, man. I will say, Dan, that I think um, on this the Partey reports that were coming out, it was saying Arsenal would be open. And I think when you see, you know, some of the players, for example, that are moving to the Saudi Arabian League, for example, um, and some of the money that's coming in for them, and, you know, maybe there's clubs across Europe that are looking as well. I think what they're basically saying is, you know what, if, if 40 million was dropped at our door for a player with two years left on his contract in his 30s and didn't perform well at the end of last season when, when crunch time really came, we'd consider it. And But in a weird way, that was like such sweeping news on the Twitter timeline that day. But I think if, if we all thought about it, we probably all knew that was the case. I don't think any of us kind of would have thought that that wasn't. Like, I, I, like in a weird way, do you know what I mean? It became like a big news story in Storm, mm. but it's kind of actually exactly what I'd expect Arsenal's position to be in, especially if they feel like, you know, if, and I know these are big ifs, I know, I know, but if they were thinking, 
well, cool. Well, that 40 million is actually the extra we needed to get Caicedo on the line. And Rice is coming anyway. And we've offered Gundogan a contract. So, like, you know, that's how... I, I know that's a very but, extreme situation, but that might be how they're thinking. That, that, that's that's so possible. Cool. That's possible, James. But I would argue that to let go of one of your key midfield players to make a... How much did party come in for? 50. What, 45. 45. 45. 45. Oh, so it wouldn't even be a profit. It wouldn't even be a, it wouldn't even be a profit then if they if you went forward to okay so that makes even less sense then I mean if if by your scenario that is their thinking that doesn't make sense to me then because you're letting one of your key players go you're not making any profit on him in fact you're making a loss <laughs> you <laughs> or, get a very, that's a good return though for for three years he's had a load of injuries and you get about ten to five yeah, to ten million yeah less. yeah yeah fair. Not bad. That's fair that's fair I would say though that I, I and, and I did tweet this I. I don't think Arteta has any intention of losing Partey and Xhaka. I have a sneaky feeling. The media keeps saying, oh, Leverkusen deals really close. They're just waiting for Rice to get over the line. I think that's a load of nonsense because, apologies to everyone who's reporting that, um, but the reason I think that's a load of nonsense is it's only going to cost 10 or something million. We know that Arsenal have all these midfield targets they want anyway. I, I would think they feel quite secure in just letting Xhaka go. I actually think that that has just quietened down a little bit because I think there might be cold feet on certain ends. I think Xhaka might have looked at the, the standing ovation and the applause before coming off the pitch and wondered, is this definitely the move I want to do? And I think Arsenal are thinking, do we really, really want to lose Xhaka? I, I, I think there might have just been a little bit of a slowing down on that front. I don't think it's just a case of, oh, they're all just waiting to to hit the green button, you know, when Rice comes in. I might I might be wrong. That would you like to keep them prediction. both, though, James? Like, for me, I would. I want to keep Party and Shaka and then add yeah, Rice and, and Caicedo or Rice and whoever we're getting. That, okay. for me, is strengthening. Not, not oh, we'll get rid of them two then and then we'll replace them with these two and then we'll get rid of these three and we'll get another three in. Hang on a minute. We need to be adding, adding players, not just replacing them. We need, okay. like Lee said, we need six players if no one else leaves, in my opinion. If people start leaving, we're going to need... Eight, nine, ten. Exactly. We start losing. For, uh, that's the way I see it. Especially with the Champions League next season. I, I know, like it sounds, you know, silly, and uh, people looking at it. But but even a couple of my Spurs mates have said, "Oh, we got Spurs. You got us." You know, four days before the Champions League. You know what I mean? Lovely. Couldn't have couldn't have been a better time for us and all that. Like you know, well, we couldn't we couldn't fu- we couldn't function in the Europa League and the, the, the league last season, like, you know, we've got to function in both. We can't just turn around and go like, oh, Champions League now, we're playing Bayern Munich. That's all right. We're playing the second team like, or, or another team like we was doing in the Europa League. We've got to go with that top team on that Tuesday or Wednesday and then go again on the Sunday against Tottenham and then go again against Man United or whoever it is and all that, like. And, and, and you've got to have a really basically... 20 players now, you know what I mean? Not not 15 or 14 that we've had in the past. And that's my big mm. worry, my big concern at this moment in time. And another thing that's worrying me is like our fan base at the moment, it, it, it really is. Um, Mikel Arteta and Edu cannot do anything wrong at this moment in time. That You know, and I, I, I mean it by this. All right, we'll get rid of party. Yeah, he weren't great towards the end of the season, so we'll get rid of him now. Like, you know, they'd rather go down that route and say that he was poor or criticize party who's been fantastic for most of the past season than criticize maybe the manager messed up by not playing uh, um, Kivia earlier on in the in 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 instead of holding or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Blah blah blah. I do, I do think that's a great point that Dan made there. Like, you know, Newcastle, Manchester City, and all that. No one's made any real, I think. Liverpool, the only team that's gone in with a, and got someone at this moment in time, and, and so from that point of view, it isn't a way. But what what I the one thing that I, I will praise Arsenal on from last season, and I think it was a big thing last season. They got their business done early last season, and we went into that pre-season and look at look at the way we started, and that was their best start for a long while. So I think that Arsenal got to go down that route again, like making sure that they what? get. Get things in early, so when we go to that uh, pre-season, we're ready like we was at the beginning last season. I think that's the main thing. You know, you cannot, as you now know, you can't be three points behind, four, five points yeah. behind City at any stage. You know what I mean? So yeah. It's vital that you get off to a good start. Vital. Well, I'm going to be extra nice, and I'm going to basically give them the benefit of the doubt that the international break may have held up certain things. I think that's 
nonsense. I've seen deals done during international breaks. I think you can get stuff done during the breaks. But let's be, I'm going to be kind. Now the international break is, is over and the teams, everyone literally, their seasons are finished now. The season is over now. People are on holiday, but you can still get stuff done on holidays. Now I expect to see some 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 real movement. But I, I'll, I'll leave speculation on the front transfers to other people, because as I mentioned, I hate it all. Can I just talk, James, a little bit about Kai Havertz? And... Yeah, I wanted to go into the players in detail. <clears throat> so let, let's do Havertz now, then we'll, we'll go into Timber, because... I'm very interested, especially on the Havertz front, where, where you stand with this one, Jordan. So I, I'd be a liar if I if I sat here and said that Kai Havertz is a player that ended the season I wanted at Arsenal next season. I've all, I've I've always thought he's a good player. I thought he was a, a, an amazing player when he was at Leverkusen. Um, and he was dubbed a generational talent. And again, I won't lie, I kind of jumped on that train. I thought it was I thought he was the next one. Chelsea have ruined him. People are talking about they don't understand or see where he will play. And I've thought about that quite a lot in this last few days. And if you look at the top managers or most of the top managers right now, they don't really look at players positionally. Everyone is, the top managers now are more so going into the kind of, you think about it, the Johan Cruyff school of football, which is the days of having a left back play at left back or a right winger play at right winger. The top we're seeing in front of our eyes is going away. The top managers now want good players. And that means, can you play in three positions? Can you play Can you play in multiple positions? We're seeing it with Stones at City. We're seeing it with Trent now at Liverpool and England. We're seeing it with Zinchenko at Arsenal. You'll see it more and more. I bet you Ten Hag does it this season at United as well. So the, so the, the Kai Havertz deal for me, I, I, I don't think we will see Kai Havertz play as a striker. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't think he's been brought in to play as an alternative to Jesus. I think he's been brought in to play as an alternative to Odegaard. I think he's been, been brought in to play as an attacking midfielder to come from, from deep, if you like. That's why I, that's what I think uh, uh, Arteta sees for him, who can also maybe play left um, and right. And if you've got no strikers left over, we can throw him up front. But I think that is where the logic uh, behind the Kai Havertz deal. And if that is the case, and Arteta wants players that can play in a fluid system in multiple positions, then in that case, it makes sense. He's not clinical. He's not a finisher. So for me, if he's been brought in as a striker, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're in trouble because he's not ruthless. He's not a killer. But that is the reason why I think I, I'm trying to make semblance of why we're going for him. And the key question has always been during the last couple of weeks is, where is he going to play? And I look at where other managers are going with their teams and think to myself, there isn't a fixed role for people like Kai Haber. So that, that's kind of why I think... Are you happy about it? He's a good player with Champions League experience, international experience and Premier League experience. He's had a bad couple of years at Chelsea. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm happy, but I, I, I think I understand it. And that, I think, is all I need to do with Arteta. Just make me understand what you're doing. We can have opinions about whether he's bad or good. Yeah. Those are opinions that are valid, fair enough. But my key thing is, can I see what my, what my manager is trying to do? And that is what I think he's trying to do. Yeah, pe people get in the comments, and I, I know it. They've said it in all the videos. Oh, you never wanted Havertz, and now you're signing him. You're going to defend the club and say you always liked him. Listen. When the news came out, I said, and Dan was there that day, I'm incredibly underwhelmed by this. I'm not keen on the signing at all. I haven't liked him at Chelsea. But the fact is it's happening. So what do you want me to do? Be miserable the whole time until he hopefully proves me wrong. I'm going to have hope and I'm going to try and look at why Mikel Arteta and Edu have got us into this very good position. We'd be willing to spend up to £60 million on a player over three years has done basically nothing in the Premier League. Now, the things that I can't shake are some of the things Robbie has said. Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, they all wanted him. You know, he's been a regular in that Germany team. Well, I don't actually know how good the Germany team's been, to be fair. Um, when you, and I know people will laugh, but when you go on YouTube and you look at sort of his highlights of this last season, everyone will tell you he's been terrible, but there's some good things there. There's things that make you see, oh, he's got quality. And then you add the fact that he can play three, four positions. And that ESPN report came out yesterday saying that, you know, basically, as well as playing in midfield, Arsenal sort of see him as an option for the front three. And when I was doing my in focus breakdown on AFTV, his, his most productive 
minutes came on the right wing, which surprised me because that's an area that we've been saying we wanted sort of depth for for Saka. He gets his most goals and assists per game from that position for by Leverkusen. He, you know, I think he only played nine times as a striker for Leverkusen. He arrives at Chelsea and he's played upwards of 60 games as a striker. So I don't think Chelsea ever, clue, ever had a clue what to do with him. But it's also a very big gamble for Arteta and Edu in the summer that's meant to be their sort of Van Dijk, Alisson, Fabinho moment to go, oh, this is an opp- opportunistic £60 million pound signing. Let's go and do it. Where are you with it, Lee? Do you know what? It's a great point you make there. And, and for me, a couple of things. I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm going to say pleased. I wasn't, I, I wasn't that set on Jesus. I'll be really honest when it, when, no. it, when it came out. Like, and a I lot of the fan base weren't. Don't let them tell you otherwise. A no, lot of people I, I, I wasn't. You know what I mean? I thought, well, I like, you know, I'm not, I wasn't, I wasn't won over by it. He won me over by when I see him in pre-season. I thought, wow, you know what I mean? So that, that could happen again. Now, the, the thing with Kyle Ka- Havertz, I think um, going back a couple of years ago, and Dan, Dan will be with us on this, there were so many reports, oh, well, he's what a great player he was. We've got to get him. We've got to get him. This is this is the player that we need. This is the player, you know. And and I, I think what's happened is with, with Chelsea, I think Chelsea are not only ruining football, they're ruining themselves because they just think, oh, Havertz is up for grabs. We we don't want anybody else to have him. We'll have him. And and then like they, they get him into the team and the club and they think they don't really know what to do with it. Like, you know, and, and the thing is with, with, with a player like that, and, and I think that someone has to, something that I'll, you need to be reminded of, how many managers have he had at Chelsea since he's been there in three years? Four, that four I think. Four managers. Lampard you twice, know? to be fair, it's the poor guy. <laughs> Say again? Lampard twice, to be fair. Yeah, so, 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 for instance, like you know, you need to have that. Oh, like manager comes in, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to play you here and all that. Like you know, what what I think he'll be interested in is there's a long term project at Arsenal. There's a thing, and that's why I think maybe he's thinking to himself, you know, what I'm going to go to a club that's got a manager that's stable that's going to be staying for a few years. If he went to Real Madrid, for instance, and I, I keep I keep hearing how he wants to go to Arsenal. It may be not because he wants to go to Arsenal because it's Arsenal or whatever. If he goes to Real Madrid, the manager changes constantly. You know, the manager changes constantly at, at Chelsea. I, I, do you know where I want to go to a club where it's going to be, you know, like settled and things like that. So I think that's what maybe he's looking to do. And I, if he is doing that, I think like that's quite a clever move from him. Uh, listen, so when it comes to Havertz, when it comes to this transfer window and everything like this at the moment, I always back there the club at the moment because you know they've not let us down in the last few years they've got most things right you know uh people losing you know losing a little bit about Havertz well you know are these the same people that are losing it about Ramsdale or Ben White and everything like that they turned out very well didn't they so so when it comes to that I'm gonna if 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 Arteta and Edu think that he's the right fit for it I, I, I I'm gonna go along with it because I questioned that with Jesus and now I'm gonna say you know what I mean He's one of my favourite players, so uh, that's how I see it at this moment in time. I, I don't, I'm not saying he would be a priority number one for me. Um, the only thing that I would say about it is if if Kai, if he, he wants to come to Arsenal, I wouldn't be doing it now, I'd be doing it a little bit later because Chelsea need to offload before they get players in, like you know. And the other thing is with Chelsea and all that, like Chelsea, what, what as a club can they offer at this moment in time? Money. You know, everybody goes, oh, like, are oh, they going to go to Chelsea? I, I, if, if, if we're in competition with Chelsea at this moment in time, this time next season, I'm worried because there will be a massive drop off from us. They've got problems left, right, and centre. They've got to get rid of players, got to bring players in. They haven't got Europe to to uh, to uh, enhance players in it, like you know. And for someone like Casido at the minute, you know what I mean? Like he's got European football at the moment. Why would you want to go Chelsea? Why? Dan, um, we've touched on Havertz, and I know we've got your thoughts on it before. So, so you know, let us know kind of where you are a few days on, but also I really want to talk about Timber because mm. I think this has really surprised Timber. Arsenal. Fans. And I think it, it, well, it might be, this might sound mad, okay? I think Declan Rice is the signing everyone's most excited about, but yeah. Timber might be the, the player that everyone is like the most convinced in terms of... Mm-hmm what we'd be spending plus where he fits in our team. I think like every fan has just unanimously gone, yes, Jurian Timber. 
listen, when we've been linked with players in the past, um, there's many, many fans that have said, what the hell are we linked with him for? Like, why are we linked with a left back when we ain't got a striker? Or why, why have we got a gaping hole at the back with Mustafi and we're trying to buy another winger? Um, we don't get that anymore. And the players that we're linked with are the players that I believe fit into the side. So there's only really Havertz at the moment that I look at thinking, yeah, I don't really see a place for you that's gapingly obvious. Um, but everywhere else I can really see. Now, Timber is one of those that's a right-sided centre-back that can play right back. That's perfect for what we need. Very highly rated. Manchester United wanted him. Um, and although he's not got the height and apparently in the air, he's not amazing. On the ball, he's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And, you know, when you look at YouTube highlights like you mentioned earlier, James, he's going he's gonna to look like Puyo or Cannavaro, right? <laughs> because they all do. Mustafi did, right? But... <laughs> There is, easy, there is, easy, a, easy, easy. I don't think there is, easy. yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but when you look I'll at, I'll never forget that Diego Costa performance. In oh, that yeah, third game. yeah, yeah, man. 100%. I bought him two years, didn't it? But anyway, yeah, absolutely. So I like the links with him. Um, and I think that if we can get that over the line for the price that's being reported, um, then I understand why people would be excited by that. There was links with Mark Gehe not long ago, which I like. I think that mm. could be a very good sign in. I like him a lot. Um, so we link with the right kind of positions there. And it's encouraging that we're looking at getting somebody to actually finally replace Rob Holding, who big up to him, seven years at the club, now needs to be replaced and upgraded. Um, when you look at the Kai Havertz thing, um, I don't know his position, James, and that worries me. I think I do, but I don't know that I've seen it at Chelsea or in England. I think I know that he's potentially a number 10 tacking eight and that, like Jordan says, will be the Odegaard replacement when he drops out. Vieira's not been that guy for me. I don't think will be. So I think if Havertz is now going to be coming in instead of Fabio Vieira, I'm actually calm with that. I don't think he's a winger because Saka and Martinelli under Arteta anyway want to be complete different attributes to Kai Havertz, in my opinion. And it might be that he can play up top. You know, Arteta might see him as a, a nine or whatever it be, potentially. I think it's been hard for him to hold down a position at Chelsea. And I think like Jordan says, or I think Lee said it actually, four managers, sometimes it's difficult. But what I will say with Kai Havertz is this. I don't remember everyone being too sure on Ramsdale or Tommy Asu until they put on an Arsenal shirt and they went, OK, I get it now. And that's what we hope that Kai Havertz does for Arsenal. I'm not going to judge him. I'm going to reserve judgment until he puts an Arsenal shirt on and starts putting in performances because I think that's only fair. But for me, what I find encouraging at the moment, although we haven't got anything over the line, is every single one we're linked with, I'm thinking... Or well, they're definitely, definitely a place for him there because Rice is an upgrade on Granite Chaka, whether you think he's had a great season or not. If we get Lavia in, that's a plan B, but Caicedo will still be my number one. If we get Lavia in, I can see a place for him. I understand why we've offered a contract to Gundawan. I understand why we're in for Timber. I would understand why we were looking to be in the race and apparently leading the race for Musa Diaby because this kid's playing 80 games a week now, Saka. So, uh, a week, sorry, a season. So, that's I kind of, of feel yeah. like, yeah, I kind of feel like when you look at the situation now, it makes sense. We're on the same page finally. So I'm hoping that it comes to fruition and it's not just rumours. Yeah. Uh, we are all excited about Timber, Lee. Very. Good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I echo what Dan's saying there. It, it, it seems like we're, we're looking to, to plug the holes that we need, we need strengthening and, and looks like we're doing it in the right way there. Like, you know, so... You know, and, and I think that um, I, I've seen him play a few times for him. I've been, been impressed with him, to be honest. I've been impressed with him, you know. And I think that it does cover, again, as we've, we've said, two positions. Uh, and uh, there is this myth, oh, you need to have like, oh, 22, 23 players. You don't. You need to have players that can play in positions that if someone gets injured, you can play in there. Like, so this, this is a guy that can fill two roles. Um, and, and that's what you want, you know. You, so, and I, and that's why I think like Casido and Declan Rice would be good buys for us because they can play in different positions where perhaps like a party can't do a box to box where say a Declan Rice can, and you know, and, and then like you know, a Casido can play like as a right back as he has done. And I think that is the way to go because you you have to think of wages as well we we've, we've spent a lot of wages on the younger players as well now coming through and all that so you've got to have these players that can fill in 
positions. Going back years ago, it was like, you know, you'd get a player that could play in a few multiple positions. You know, you'd get a, when you only had two two substitutes, you had to find someone that could play a midfield and a right back or a forward that could play midfield as well. It's, it's just changed a little bit now where, where you've got to play two positions. And uh, so, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that one. Can I just ask, can I ask the group, James? Sorry. Mm. If, if Arsenal this summer signed Kai Havertz, Timber, Declan Rice, Lavia, uh, those four came in, but one of Xhaka or Partey left and Tierney left, would you guys be happy with that? No. No. One of Partey and Xhaka. We need more. Yeah. We need more to compete at the, the top end of the Champions League and, and the, the Premier League. So what would your midfield options be? Let, let, let's say, look, Xhaka looks like he's going. So let's say our options are... Partey. Partey, Jorginho, Lavia. Rice. Rice. The no, thing maybe. is, I see four sixes there. Like, Rice could play as an eight, but I just see four defensive midfielders. Oh, I think that's where we play, James. I honestly do. I, I, one of my uh, West Ham pork you ever mentioned has always believed, it's always said to me, if you get Declan Rice, play him as a box-to-box midfielder because he's wasted playing the holding role. You know what I mean? Like, he just says he's that good. Let him just go and do what he does. He says it. I agree. Yeah. That's what he's yeah. always said. And he watches I've... West Ham a lot and, and Declan Rice a lot. He says, you know what I mean? Let him, let him off the leash. I've been saying that, I've been saying this for a good week now, actually, on AFTV, that... I just have a sneaky feeling. It's based on nothing. I don't know anyone. I have no sources. There's, I've not read anything. It's just a little gut feeling that this Gundogan race isn't fully over. A couple of weeks ago, I said, well, there's no chance. You know, he'll sign to City or he'll go Barcelona. Well, I mean, why would he basically... What do we offer that's better than... If it's, I want a new challenge, well, Barcelona. If it's, I want to stay in the Premier League, well, City... But actually, as this has kind of been ticking on, and then there were reports this morning, actually, that Arsenal are pushing hard, apparently, to, to get it done. I just kept thinking, why have neither club got it quite over the line? Um, so I, Once I just long little... contract, doesn't he? Once three years, and no one's given him three years. That's the rumour I'm hearing. I could see Arsenal doing that. The way he yeah, played. I, I think it'd be a fantastic signing, James. I could fantastic. see Arsenal So, so I'll ask, sorry, Lee and, Lee and uh, all three of you, same scenario, but we kept both Xhaka and Partey. That's what exactly. I'm yeah, I'll be very happy with that. Or Xhaka goes and Gundogan comes in, like yeah. then I'm happy. Yeah, like but basically, okay. I need two very recognizable, dependable sixes, two very recognizable, dependable eights. That's fair. Vieira, Smith Rowe will, will give us what we need for for Odegaard. You got Havertz there, who I think adds steps to the front three. I think Timber's a great addition um, as well. So, so. I, I, I I wanted Gahey. I wanted Gahey. But if we, but Timber, I would more than take Timber. I did a lot of watching of him last summer when United were linked with him. Because I wanted to, I heard a lot of hype around him. So I did a lot of watching of him, a lot of games I've, I followed. And he's a brilliant player. Brilliant, brilliant player. He'd be, he'd be a great get. Really good get if we could get him, get him over the line. Let's see. £30 million bid was made. They won around 50. Let's see if they will settle. Um, but I, I'm with Jordan. Like, when there's all this talk, and I've, you know, I've said that I'm cautiously optimistic and that I'm back in the club and all that. I will say, though, that, you know, a week from now, when we do the next podcast, I think one of those three deals that we know have all got to the bidding stage need to have progressed in some very key way, whether yeah, it's a deal agreed, whether it's a, whether, I don't know, whatever it might be. I don't think we want to be here in a week and two more targets we bid for. Then you're like, okay, listen, but, I'm I'm happy. I'm, I'm I'm happy with what the club are doing. So let's see. Going going to go on to comments of the week in a sec. But I do just want to say a massive congrats to Bakaya Saka for his first oh. career hat trick. Um, what a what a player he is. That roof mm. that roof finish, Jordan. I come to you immediately on this because you said that that Leeds goal is one of the goals of the season for you. Um, did it against Everton as well. He had a goal against West Ham disallowed. Um, but he. He's really mastered that. Aguero was the guy. Um, he was. He, he likes that finish, Saka. The, the second goal is obviously the best of the three, but the 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 the, the roof finish. Let's call it the roof finish. There you go. Yeah. That that roof finish is is such a hard. It's so hard because a you've got to be really accurate, but because you haven't got much to shoot through, you've got to hit it so hard that the keeper just can't move. <laughs> the keeper just hasn't got any time to move. 
it's a great finish. And I just think I've, I've put pressure on Saka this season to get 20. I need, I need 20 goals from this season. If we're going to put Z- Z- Saka, Xhaka, Saka in the elite level players of, the, of, of his type, alongside Vinicius, alongside Salah, those guys are getting 20 goals. 15 goals is cute and it's not, not easy, but I need 20 goals now. And I think if we if we can have a really good summer off, and he's played lots of games the last two seasons, and come back and really got up a level, we've got a really special, special guy on our hands that could be the difference between us winning the league or not. We're chatting about players coming in. We may have the title-winning player in our team already because the way he's going right now, and I think we've got to protect him because there will be a point in the season where he drops off. There'll be a point in the season where he goes 10 games without a goal. 15 games, two goals, and he's can't hit, he can't hit a target, he can't beat a man. That will happen, and we've got to support him. But right now, the boy's on fire, and it's, it's North Macedonia. Let's relax, yeah, let's calm down. But the current way he's going on, after what I thought was a poor end to the season, I did think he was poor the last okay. 10 games of the season. But if he can, if when he turns it on, there's not many players that can beat a man going left or right, and we've got a special guy there. So, yeah, he big up, big up, Serka. He plays a more inside role for England, which I do think is interesting. We really haven't had yeah, the touch right. line, but you're he right, does right. come a little bit more central, and I like that. Dan and Lee, just super quick on Saka, because um, we, we do have to super to quick. Comment, but, yeah. I, I I am an England fan once again. Oh, I've got yeah, to okay. start, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Shameless. Saka's doing it. Shameless. It, it, it's because we've got the star boy. We've got, he's a star. But when was the last time we had the star player in the England team? Like, right? you know, mm. I can't remember. Like, you know, it, it's. I, I look back and well, you know, there's talk about Foden doing it, and and, and he's gone over and above, above him. You know, I I can't remember the last time England had a, a superstar player like that that was an Arsenal player. You know what I mean? And I I thought all three goals yesterday were fantastic. Um, I know I, I I get it. It's Macedonia. The second goal sensational. The pass from from Trent and then the touch and and the thing. But also his third goal. You know. That, that ain't easy because he's got time to think. Time when you when that sometimes you hear a lot of players go, you know, good even good players. Oh, he had too much time to think about it. It wasn't you know instinctive. He knew what he had to do there. Slotted it in, lovely, wonderful one. And I, I, I'm but I, for the first time now, I'm buzzing watching England play because he's playing like you know what he's a gift. He's a gift and he's ours. Is it yeah, fair to is, say man. that after Harry Kane, he's the first name on the team sheet? Yeah, definitely. 100%. Before b- before Bellingham, before anybody else, yeah, I, I think be, Kane be, before first Stones, of the reason, yeah, Kane, I, I, I Kane, right. Kane, and then Saka for me, hundred yeah. percent. There's other yeah. players that are important within England squad, well, with any team, but for me, this kid has got everything. And you know, I, everyone said I, I said a wild take, and I was deluded when I said it, but I mean it. In his position, if he stays in the Premier League forever, and hopefully it's at Arsenal, he'll be up there with the Salas, Beckham's, and Ronaldo. When people go and talk about picking a world, yeah. uh, sorry, a, a best ever eleven in the Premier Ooh, League, that's how highly I rate this guy. Big shot. That's how highly I rate him. I think he's Love unreal, it. Jordan. Like this, this kid has got everything. And how much better can he get? Gerard was on there last mm. night saying it's scary. They think he can go to two more levels. He's twenty-one. It's mm. absolutely scary what we're seeing from this kid. And do you know what's more important for me, James, than anything else? Not just his quality. How everybody loves him. Mm. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember a player loved this much at this age. Like literally, the the England players that. By the way, none of these were Gooners, yeah? You had James Madison, Jack Greedish, Harry Kane, Declan Rice, all these guys that don't play for us, or John Stones, all h- coming up to him, hugging him, high-fiving him, smiling with him, joking with him, grabbing hold of him, like, looking at him. Absolutely loved it. Then he goes and hugs the manager. I, I, honestly, man, I don't know anyone saying anything bad about this kid, and he deserves all the plaudits he's getting, man. It's okay. fantastic. Okay. And Dan, sorry, just proof for James as well. And going back to our transfer chat earlier on, that's why for me it's really important that we do get someone that can rotate with him. 100%. Because he's got to play Champions League Wednesdays and Saturdays now. So 100%. we can't be having him burn out come February. That can't and also, happen. Also, which is a good point, when he... He is that good, right? He is this good, right? I think he could go anywhere, really, like with a year left on his contract. Some of those conversations must have been, who are we getting in? Mm. Because it would be, if I, if it was me, I'd be going like, who are we good getting point. in? Like, you know what I mean? Are, are we getting this player, that player? Because if if they weren't, you know, I mean, I, I don't think he'd be as... You know, do you remember what, when Van Persie, they asked him and he said, well, we weren't keen on it? There must be some talk about some sort of players again, because this kid... You know, if Arsenal don't 
push with his ambitions as well, then then he will go. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that is so, and that we've got that this for for the, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about him, but I'm also worried that he's going to be too good, and we're going to lose him. Like if we. He don't. also uh, Declan Rice posted a picture of the two of them, and and Saka posted friends, a, a red. A red love heart and a white love heart. Make of that what you will. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go to our comments of the week. Um, yeah. I've got one from Rupert Clark. Has anyone else got this one? Uh, I've got one. I've got. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll kick things off. It's about you, George. Right, kick, kick it off. One of she did do one oh, last week, oh. which has been um, uh, highlighted. To me? No. no. Uh, James. No, go on, James. Oh, well, James. My one. Uh, Jordan, the gift that keeps on giving only oh, catches geez. the Arsenal highlights, but attends West Ham and City's parades in person. <laughs> shameless, absolutely shameless. Like, you know what I mean? Go on, you're up, Lee. I've got Stapes 22. No wooden spoon for Jordan next season. He'll have to have a wooden hammer. Like, you know? <laughs> James, not having a comet of the week, should also have a point deducted. I agree. Love, oh, I, agree. I, I agree. agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, Dan, uh, I don't know if you if you if so, you got one. Yeah, I've got I've got one, but Lee, Lee has taken my one, but I have got two. So okay. I had oh. the wood, wood I had the wood and hammer one as well because I thought he might have gone for that. I know Lee will. Um, <laughs> so I like this one. I like this one because I love Jordan and Jordan. That's actually someone I actually I actually do listen to and and actually can connect with and relate to. That's your meaning most of the time. Listen, most of the time I do think on a similar wavelength, man. And this is why I think this is like a backhanded compliment. But you, I don't know if you'll take it like this, man. This is from S H uh, Ming Shiming one one seven five. I hope I haven't butchered that that name. Uh, it says for forever Arsenal podcast uh, to be the best show on AFTV. Despite Jordan being on it, is astounding. It's all love. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll I'll take it. it. Love it. Um, Jordan, I'm, go I'm, for it. I've got Steve Gilham here. He says, when Jordan said he was at the Hammers Parade and lifted the trophy, I spat my tea out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no shame. He's got no shame. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Lifting the trophy. <laughs> On the bus. <laughs> Me and Deck. <laughs> Irons. <laughs> Irons. Irons. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, it's fun. But when are we, when are we um, playing them, actually? When, when, when Boxing Day. Boxing Day. We haven't perfect. even really broken down the fixture. Again. Yet, but but Boxing Day just again. Think, West Ham. I actually think we... Um, Actually, that fixture list looks all right for us in terms of oh. the way things are positioned. But yeah, not so sure. We can do it next week. Yeah, or, plenty of time to digest that one. Or we'll, or we'll talk about the other three bids that have come in in the next seven days. <laughs> oh, I'll have a say now. Come on, let's 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 have a, let's have a little uh, ten out of ten. Like by the time we do our next podcast, we'll have Arsenal signed somebody. No, they're not not signed. Not. Signs it maybe maybe an agreed fee. I think I think Havertz will be the first the n- agreed fee. advanced negotiations, all that nonsense. Flipping up. Also, no, as well, imminent, oh, imminent I think bids, they can, I think bids they advanced be done thoughts. By <laughs> advanced thoughts. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Be done by next week. Also, as well, have we got some kind of deal with with Bavs? It's like our social media team. Have they just like decided they're going to pay Bavs to kind of take his quotes or his tweets? To post on our on our on our Instagram like every other day, every other post is like oh, Bab TV. says. Yeah, what's going on there? Well, Babs knows his football. Leave us alone. Oh, God, yeah, well, yeah, you, you hate to How you hate to go to shake up a bit. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, All right, let's let let's let Jordan go have his day. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the slightly rushed end, all viewers. Um, obviously, we, we're recording this early in the morning. There's lots to get on with, but we couldn't not bring you a show. So big thanks to everyone who's tuned in. Dan, fantastic. Thank you for stepping in, my friend. Cheers, lads. Brilliant. Um, ben, and Shiroi, ben and Shiroi, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and Turkish. I mean, oh, yeah. no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Um, yeah. Remember that you can catch us all on, well, you can catch us all and all the shows on uh, Spotify and all other podcast platforms. So go check us out. Uh, we'll be back next week. All breaking news on the transfer front is coming out on AFTV. It does Jordan's head in seeing all the updates and all the little 
little bits of detail, but we're going to keep you updated. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. We'll leave you there. All right. Big thanks to everyone. We'll see you very soon.